Hello, hello everyone and welcome to today's class lesson masterclass episode whatever you'd like to call this right here on the school of radiance podcast i'm your host rachel varga double board certified aesthetic nurse specialist since 2011. one of the things i want to share with you is that dermal rolling has stood the test of time for doing things and supporting things in the skin like collagen production what happens as we age we lose collagen. What can we do to get more collagen? Well, we can fuel our bodies appropriately, ensure that our hormones are balanced because when estrogen decreases, so does elastin. So make sure that whether you're perimenopause, menopause, or postmenopause, that your hormones are in check. This also applies to the gentlemen as well. 25% of you listening are the gents. Collagen is king. When we lose collagen, This is what makes us feel like our skin is thinner. We have more fine lines and wrinkles. Our skin has sagged, all sorts of fun things. Those are all indications that we've lost some collagen. And I'd love to open up the chat and invite questions here. For those of you who are tuning in live for this recording, you'd love to join our next live recording here where I love to engage with you. Check out the show notes for this episode and click the link to join my next live masterclass recording session for here on the show. What can we do to promote more collagen? Well, you can do it at home. You can also do it in the clinic. I'd love to differentiate some of the best products, in my opinion, to support more collagen production. And in particular, with dermal rolling, I'm going to open up my roller right here. My demonstrations that are more high-level expert demonstrations and tutorials are offered in my seasonal tutorials, and summer tutorials are happening now. I do these tutorials every season. They're always live, they're fun, they're interactive, and I actually take you start to finish into my restroom and show you exactly how to dermal roll your face, eyelids, lips, neck, chest, hands, inner arms, elbows, tops of the knees, and also into the the edges of our hairline and also the scalp. So we cover all sorts of different areas in these more high-level expert tutorials. And I do recommend all one-on-one clients of mine join at least one of my skincare tutorials where I walk you through the basics to advanced layers. Now, here's the problem. When people get all excited to do their own microneedling or dermal rolling at home, Oftentimes they reach out and a lovely lady, Carrie, reached out and said, you know, can I just get the stamper? Can I stamp my whole face? This is a very common question that I receive. So there's two different things that you can do at home with microneedling or dermal rolling. Those two words are interchangeable. They're essentially doing the same thing. The stamper, in my opinion, if you were to pick up a larger stamper and do your whole face, it would take you forever. And I would question if you're actually getting really good coverage. So I show you in tutorials where to use the stamper on the face because this is a more shallow needle. And the roller here, the MR3 roller, this is the depth of needle that's perfect to use for the rest of your life because it goes just deep enough to access the the fibroblasts that make our elastin and collagen and also the melanocytes that are responsible for pigmentation. So we have a question here, does the size of the roller matter on the face? Yes, it does. When I check out what different influencers who tout from the mountaintops that they're a dermal rolling expert, microneedling expert, and they sell these courses and make their own rollers, products, serums, and all of that, actually take a look at their protocols that they share. And I'm usually a little underwhelmed with the frequency that they're encouraging. And also they're often recommending things that are going too deep and that's not necessary. So the MR3 that I have on my skin shop, it's been on the market since the nineties. It's a really well-made product. It's going to last you two years. These things dull like a razor. Lower quality rollers are going to be like a 10 to 20 use product. And then you have to throw it away and get a new one. Well, that's not very economically and environmentally friendly, is it? 
And it isn't about going deeper. Deeper isn't better. When you're doing microneedling in the clinic, you're going, you know, once a month for six months, those are going much deeper and a topical numbing is applied. However, with at-home use with the MR3, two to five nights a week is perfect. So getting back to Carrie's question, because it's a very common question that I get all the time, what's the roller I need and what are the serums that I need? Pause. You do not want to put the cart before the horse. Clients that I've worked with over the years that have skin redness, dryness, irritation, what's the common things that I see? Commonly, I see that they're not really dialed in with their basic routine first. You need to have your basic routine first for at least two weeks to stabilize the skin. Then for about two nights a week for two weeks, then you apply your dermal rolling serums in the evening to get your skin used to say the copper peptide, hyaluronic acid, lactic acid, and vitamin C. And then you dermal roll. So we're, for, we're first whispering to the skin with our basic routine, cleansing in the AM and PM with the double cleanse in the PM, moisturizing AM and PM, providing nutrients and nutrition for your skin and sunscreen every day with exfoliation two to five times a week. Usually within about two weeks, redness starts to go down and also you can experience more glassiness and smoothness to the skin in two weeks. And I know this because I started following clients a long time ago when they would see me in the clinic for consult, I'd get them started on a basic routine, cleanser, moisturizer, sunscreen scrub for two weeks, take their photos at that two week mark. And it was actually pretty, pretty neat to see the changes in just two weeks with following a basic routine. Now, the nuance here that I want to highlight is that basic routine is going to be different for everybody. So if you haven't had a one-on-one -on -one with me, I recommend you book that ASAP. I don't know how long I'm going to be offering these one-on-one -on -one sessions. And if I do continue to offer them, I am going to have to raise the price because my schedule is likely going to be shifting. So if you are looking to book that one-on-one, -on -one, don't wait, do that now. I warmly invite you to use code podcast 15 when you book your one-on-one -on -one with me. And this is where I will basically lay out a simplified skincare routine for you and pull from about 18 different brands that I work with to create a routine that's specific to your skin needs. Because when I work with clients and they're using over-the-counter products that are typically marketed to, you know, teens or 20-year-olds, it's not really going to meet the needs of mature skin needs, which many of you listening are 35 and up. We want to use products that have higher levels of actives, including vitamin C, E, hyaluronic acid, peptides, start to sprinkle in the retinol. There's a whole thing with skin cycling too. So when we're talking about dermal rolling, we also want to talk about skin cycling with our retinol. And we also need to ensure that our skincare routine at the basic level, the foundational level is on point. Why is that? And yes, this, this session here is all about the best products for dermal rolling, which I do have on my skin shop. And sometimes I'm a little hesitant here on the show to highlight specific products, their names, things like that, simply because my recommendations are always subject to change depending on manufacturer quality, formulation changes, and also availability of the product. Or if there's been a new product that's come out and taken over the needs or does a better job as something I previously mentioned. And these updates happen all the time. Every quarter, I usually go through my products. But the MR3 roller on my skin shop, it is the dermal roller that has stood the test of time, kind of like a really good, reliable, well-made vehicle. <laughs> it's going to last you a long time. You pay for what you get. So if you find these cheaper rollers that are 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 dollars online, you do really want to hit pause. Because when I have looked at other rollers that are on the market, a lot of them come from China. A lot of times the needles aren't needles, they're actually blades under the microscope, and they're not a, a surgical steel or titanium. They're a who knows what metal alloy. And that all those things matter in regards to purchasing a proper roller. So I love this one. I teach you exactly how to use it in my tutorial, start to finish, wash my face, show you exactly how to do it, put your products on afterwards. 
So you have to use a really good high quality roller, not something that some influencer online is talking about. That's, you know, their own product. And this one's been made in California since the nineties, really, really solid product. The next thing you're going to want to have with your at home dermal rolling is the stamper. Now this stamper is great for some of the more delicate areas of the face, like around the eyes, where we want to go a little bit more shallow and also areas of the face that are more contoured, like between the corners of the eyes and also the corners of the nose. It's difficult to get the roller in those situations. So in those areas, so I do like to recommend a combination approach of both the roller and the stamper. And yes, I also have the stamper on my skin shop too. So now we want to talk about products. What do we apply with rolling? Now I see, again, a lot of different protocols online that say to put products on the skin and then dermal roll. And that is not what the, uh, you know, the Dr. Lance Setterfield, who wrote the Bible on dermal rolling, recommends. He recommends cleaning the skin first, then dermal rolling, then putting your products on. Now, what do we want to put on the skin? Well, your basic routine with your cleanser, moisturizer, sunscreen, and scrub, those products are likely that I've recommended for you designed for topical application on intact skin. Now, when we're doing dermal rolling, we're creating these little tiny tiny channels in the skin. You're not going to get any bleeding. Your skin just might look a little bit red, and feel a little bit warm after, but these little channels, it's like aerating the lawn. The products that we apply need to be appropriate and clean for transdermal application, which actually allows for penetration of products after dermal rolling to reach about a hundred to a thousand times deeper into the skin. That's a big deal. That's the whole benefit with doing at-home dermal rolling and microneedling is you're able to get things like the copper peptide with lactic acid and hyaluronic acid much deeper into the skin. Copper peptide's fantastic for things like pigmentation because dermal rolling is great for the skin texture. It's also great for the skin tone. So fine lines, wrinkles, pore size, pigmentation, and acne scarring. If you have acne scars or deeper wrinkles, then potentially using the MR5 roller that's on my skin shop is a great option to use once a week. No more than once a week. Deeper is not better. It's actually being more consistent at the MR3 depth to keep those enzymes that make the collagen and elastin active and present in the skin ongoing. The next product that you can apply after dermal rolling is the Soluble C. This is an ultra clean product with vitamin C. Now, one of the nuances I do want to point out is because these products are super clean, they're designed for the transdermal application. They don't have any other filler agents. They're fresh, made to order. Oftentimes when you go on my skin shop, you're going to see that these are sold out. It's because I like to sell through my inventory and make sure that I always have freshly made products on the shelves that were literally made within a week or two of it getting on my shelf. And that's really important for you to know uh, because we don't want to be dermal rolling with different filler agents or different preservatives on the skin in the product. We want to use really clean products. So the nuance with the dermal rolling serums that I work with, including the copper peptide serums, there's two different bottle sizes, and then the Soluble C Ultra Clean Vitamin C Serum, is these serums aren't really made to feel luxurious. They're not really the best for daytime use. You want to be using the different vitamin C serums and hyaluronic acid serums that I have on the store, like the Ever Active C the Super Serum, the Pro Heal Serum. Those are some examples of serums that are better for, say, daytime use because they actually can enhance daytime protection and hydration underneath your moisturizer and after cleansing. These ones don't really have that same slip or glide that you would expect from a more highly performing daytime antioxidant serum. These ones can feel like a little bit tacky afterwards and the, your skin can feel a little bit dry. And then you want to, after that, apply some of the approved dermal roll, post-dermal rolling products, you know, in my opinion, 
which again are super clean, fresh, made to order products. Examples of those are gonna be the 555, the K-Derma, and the Supreme Lotion. Those three moisturizers are great to apply after dermal rolling. Again, fresh, made to order, and you don't wanna be just using your daytime moisturizer after dermal rolling because it might have some things in there that can give you some irritation. And the other thing is, what do you do if you get irritation after dermal rolling? What do you do? You jump back to your basic skincare routine. There's lots of nuances with, with integrating things like dermal rolling into your routine. It's not just about, oh, I wanna get a roller and use whatever products I have. You're not really gonna get the best results and you really wanna be using a roller that stood the test of time, like this one that's been manufactured since about the 90s. It's been around the block, stood the test of time, and they last about two years and get to the right depth that we desire too. So yes, the size of the roller matters for the face, doing stamping to a specific areas, not the whole face. There's lots of different stamper products out there as well, where you're literally stamping your whole face. Now, in my opinion, that's actually gonna take you forever. And using a roller is actually, I think, gonna give you better coverage because we're going in a couple of different directions and multiple passes. And I show you exactly how to do this in my seasonal skincare tutorials. If you want access to all four seasons of my tutorials for a whole year, then the Glow 365 option is great. You basically pay for like two and a half seasons and get the other one and a half seasons uh, included as an extra bonus for signing up for the year with them. It's really fun. It's a great way to stay on track. When it comes to dermal rolling products, we also can do dermal rolling on our body. And for that, there's the Dermalac product and the ACNE oil product as well. I have more of that oil coming in stock shortly. These are really great and intended for body dermal rolling. There is a body roller that I have, although it's not as deep as the MR3 facial roller. So if you're looking to save some money, you get one roller for the face and the body. It's gonna last you about two years. If you wanna do the scalp and the hair, the hairline, you do wanna have a separate roller for that that have two MR3s because when you're going over your hair, uh, it can dull the roller. So I always like to recommend a separate roller for the face, a separate roller for the hair or the scalp and a separate stamper for the face and a separate stamper for the scalp as well because the one you use on your hair is simply going to dull it faster. So if you are wanting to get some hair growth happening on your scalp, there's lots of evidence that microneedling and dermal rolling can be supportive for hair growth as well. Just put a little H with a jiffy marker on the bottom of the case here, and that will help you remember that that is the roller that you're using on your scalp or your hair. And you might just wanna replace that one after about six months or a year. But when it comes to hair growth, I really like the hair growth stimulating products that I have on my skin shop. They use a willow bark extract. They're very well priced as well and as clean as possible. And that's the Advanced Thinning Shampoo, Advanced Thinning Conditioner. There's also that once a week scalp spray or the Advanced Thinning Formula. The spray or the Advanced Thinning Formula, those are the two that are, are going to basically, every time you wash your hair, you put a little bit on your scalp and it helps to feed the scalp. The scalp is actually an extension of our facial skin and it's a great idea to not only put great products on your face, but also on your scalp to mitigate things like hair loss and hair thinning, which can happen as we age. And just a little tip, if you're noticing sort of like accelerated hair loss, what you wanna do is make sure you get your thyroid levels checked and ensure that you're eating enough nutrients throughout the day. Elizabeth, what does the hairspray do? So that's the once a week scalp spray. And I teach you how to apply the hair growth stimulating products to your scalp, actually in one of the lessons in each of my seasonal tutorials. And it, it basically just helps to feed the scalp and the hair follicle and the base of that to, it's the specific active that uses a willow bark extract that's great for hair growth. And it's cleaner than say using an over-the-counter minoxidil product like Rogaine or some of the other products out there like Nioxin. Um, this one is just such a 
great, as clean as possible product that really does deliver results. I recently did a consultation from Michael and he said after just a couple of weeks, he noticed a difference in how full his hair was, his buddies did at the gym and also his barber. Now, two weeks, I would say that's pretty quick uh, to be noticing things because the, the hair follicle cycle is actually about six to eight weeks. That's why when you're doing your hair removal, uh, with lasers, you really want to not just do it like once a month, you every four weeks, you actually want to space it out to about six to eight weeks. Just a little nuance there. So do I love dermal rolling? Yes. Is it great for just about everybody? I would say yes as well, except if you have active acne or skin cancers that are present on your skin, you just don't want to be moving that bacteria or those uh, cancer cells throughout the skin. So always get your skin checked head to toe by your physician. Uh, do that, do that full body scan. And no, this is not medical advice. This is educational information only. If you think you have a medical condition, you must seek the guidance of a licensed physician. But this is, dermal rolling is a fantastic thing to do. Uh, I've seen a lot of my clients who are say retirees from ages 60 to mid nineties doing dermal rolling. And they actually, over time, uh, end up having thicker skin than some of my clients in their 20s and 30s. I'll never forget this one time in the clinic. I was working with one of my clients who's in her 80s. And then right after her, I saw one of my clients in her late 20s or early 30s. I can't quite recall. I was like, oh my goodness, you know, this more mature, wise in years uh, client of mine just had much thicker skin. And, uh, you know, that's dermal rolling. That's continually activating that collagen and elastin production in the skin, which is great to think, you know, we can have thicker skin as we mature in more ways than one. Wink, wink. The other thing that's a great complement to dermal rolling, now that I've covered the products, the MR3 roller, the stamper, the copper peptide, the vitamin C, those are basically your dermal rolling products. You also need to have your basic routine cleanser, moisturizer, sunscreen scrub on hand to stabilize the skin and to also care for your skin appropriately the following day because you're only rolling in the PM. Dermal rolling is a little bit of a technical topic. And in my tutorials, I spend a whole hour going through the nuances of this and showing you how to do it. And then there's another lesson in there called skin cycling. So you're going to be doing your roller you're rolling two to five times a week, nights a week. And then the other nights you're gonna be using your basic routine, say if your skin's a little red, dry, irritated, just use your basic routine that night to calm the skin and sort of like restabilize that skin barrier. And then on nights when your skin's feeling pretty good, you could say do your peel or your retinol. This is getting into skin cycling. And I previously used to recommend a specific retinol after dermal rolling, but that product is no longer available. So now I've shifted to uh, making the recommendation of using an even stronger retinol in the evening on its own when you're not dermal rolling. So those nights off you are say maybe in a little bit of a rush, you don't have the 20 minutes to do your dermal rolling, then wash your face, put your eye cream on and apply your retinol and maybe your moisturizer over top and go to bed or you could do a peel overnight. Again, there's, I have a whole hour lesson on the topic of peels and retinols and skin cycling and a whole hour lesson on dermal rolling. So on the show here, this is very much like a macro overview because I can't really get into the depths and breadths for you to truly understand and master some of these concepts. So the intention for this show was to highlight the, the key products to have on hand for dermal rolling, which is the MR3, the Stamper, the Copper Peptide, and the Soluble C. So I wanted to highlight those four products because I get this question all the time. And Carrie recently asked, you know, what products do I need? I'm on a budget. That's what you need, but you also need to make sure that you have your basics first. So that's your cleanser, moisturizer, sunscreen, scrub. I would beg to question that an eye cream is also just as important because the skin around the eyes, it's uh, very thin compared to the rest of the face and it does show signs of aging first. And sometimes for some individuals, using a facial moisturizer around the eyes can lead to clogging of the pores. We see things like milia, which are like these little tiny white pearls that can pop up 
And that can often be related to not using the right cleanser, moisturizer, sunscreen, and scrub for you. And basically it's like a whitehead. And then those little whiteheads become larger and they actually start to grow legs and sometimes you even need to have them surgically excised. So that's why using uh, proper eye cream is a really good idea for the eyes and not just your general facial moisturizer because it could be a little too rich for the eyes. I'm opening it up for some questions here for those of you who are here live. Elizabeth, you've been asking some great questions. And for those of you who are catching the replay, and you're wanting some more information on rolling, book your one-on-one, -on -one, join my tutorials. Those are gonna be the two best resources to get you on track. The one-on-one -on -one provides that customized recommendation from me personally with ongoing support whenever you need it. And then the tutorials, we go through seven lessons, skincare, makeup, hair care, biohacking, to help with body composition and longevity and healthy skin. We talk about pre and post recovery with lasers, which I'm gonna to touch on in just a second. We also uh, cover things like skin cycling with peels, retinols, there's the dermal rolling tutorial, and then a more advanced tutorial. So these are basically, I, I designed, I created the tutorials because after one-on-ones, I was getting all the same questions. And uh, it's just easy for me to relay it in those uh, seven, those seven different classes that are about an hour in length. And yes, you can catch those replays over and over again. Elizabeth, are you having a sale coming up? Yes. If you're on my newsletter, it's really important that um, that's where I share things like promotions, uh, early bird specials and things like that. Uh, so there is a uh, early bird promotion on summer skincare tutorials. So you don't want to miss out on that. And yes, when I do different promotions, gift with purchases, things like that, I send that out only to my newsletter. So you definitely want to join my newsletter. The link to register for that is at the school of radiance.com. It's also in the show notes because I really want to you know, get this information to you first who are on my newsletter because uh, oftentimes with sales, I run out <laughs> and I want to give you all first dibs. And those of you who are listening here, I definitely want to join that newsletter. And while you're at it, um, another free thing is my 30 minute biohacking lesson where I cover the framework of air, water, lighting, electromagnetics, eating the right foods and detoxing to set your skin up for success. That's completely free over at theschoolofradiance.com. I'm always looking for ways to, you know, share free information uh, as I do a lot of here on the show and also uh, in other ways too. So getting to a more technical side of things here, I love dermal rolling for at home two to five nights a week, every season to keep the collagen and elastin elevated in the skin because we lose the collagen and elastin as we age. It's cost effective and it's also time effective. However, if you wanna go a little bit deeper, that's where lasers are gonna come in and lasers are basically doing a similar thing to the little needle in the skin, very tiny needle. You're not going to get any blood because we're not going deep enough to penetrate the capillary beds. But in the clinic, yes, you can probably get some pinpoint bleeding. And then also with lasers, yes, you can sometimes get some pinpoint bleeding with a fractionated laser session. There's so many different types of lasers on the market. I'm not going to highlight any particular brand here because it really does depend uh, for those recommendations, you know, what your skin type is, what season you're in, if you're wanting to deal with pigmentation like browns or reds or things like texture, like pore size, fine lines, wrinkles, and tighten the skin. There's like a whole slew of lasers that are available. Some are better than others. This area of technology is always advancing, uh, but things do need to stand the test of time. So in a broad sense, a fractionated laser is using a laser beam to create that column of injury, similar to what the microneedling dermal roller does, but it just goes quite a bit deeper. And that is quite a bit more expensive as well. You can look at, you know, a, 
uh, in clinic laser as being one to two thousand dollars a session for the face and the neck this is going to go quite a bit deeper it is going to pack a little bit more of a punch you might see those results a little bit faster with in clinic lasers but i also like the approach of doing the heavy lifting at at home first with your skincare, with your dermal rolling, with your retinols, with your peels, with your exfoliation, with living healthily, cleaning up the act, with the biohacking side of things and the tools for purifying air, water, lighting, electromagnetics, eating the right food, starting to do some detoxing. I really like that approach of doing this heavy lifting first and then doing some of the in-clinic things for what's left over. And then between your in-clinic sessions, doing your skincare and your dermal rolling to keep the skin on point, it's gonna help with recovery and also help to maintain your results. And resurfacing lasers, you typically wanna do about three a month apart. And the resurfacing lasers, you're gonna be red, you're gonna be a little bit swollen for a couple of days and you, you wanna have that social downtime. Now for pigmentation, that's a whole different category of light and laser and energy technologies depending on the season we're in so with the spring and summer this is still okay for fractionated resurfacing sessions not so much for intense pulse light and then the fall winter is really where we can start to undo some of that sun damage from the pigmentation side of things so lots of different lasers that are available on the market. They all do different things because of the energy of the technology. They have different targets, which could be reds or browns, broken clap capillaries, for example, or texture. We're targeting the epidermis, which is the top of the skin for resurfacing, or the deeper dermis to get even a deeper resurfacing, uh, fine line and wrinkle and collagen production. Uh, activation stimulation um, interaction with if you will so yeah I teach lasers to clinicians you know across the globe and rejuvenation so here's the deal with collagen it takes about three months for new collagen to form in the skin and then it takes about six to eight months for more mature collagen to show up in the skin what I will say is the day after I do my dermal rolling I always notice that my skin is looking thicker, it's looking more plump because we're getting a little bit of that controlled injury, we're getting like a slight amount of edema or like a slight amount of swelling, if you will, which actually makes the skin look plump. So there's some nuances with your timing with dermal rolling, the evenings you do it on, maybe before, you know the day before an event where you just want your skin to look great, but you also don't wanna do it the day before, maybe you're going to the beach or the pool and having lots of sun exposure. So again, it's very seasonally specific how you target your at-home and your in-clinic skin and rejuvenation goals. That's why I do these seasonal tutorials. And I'm always learning as a researcher and instructor myself too. So that's why I always do these tutorials live. They're not like pre-recorded from a couple years ago. They're literally live each week and they're a lot of fun. So there you have it. The dermal rolling products you need. You need your basic routine. It's recommended that it's customized for your specific needs. The roller, the stamper, the copper peptide, the vitamin C. And then to integrate the dermal rolling beyond your basic for two weeks, use that copper peptide soluble C for two weeks, two nights a week, and then you get into dermal rolling. But if you try and cut corners and use you know, cheaper rollers, knockoff rollers, lower quality rollers, and you look for again, cheaper serum options that really aren't designed for that transdermal application, it's kind of using a lawn for, it's like using a lawn fertilizer without having aerated the lawn to you know, open up those little gaps in the lawn that that fertilizer is gonna get into. It's about using the right product and the right application, but it's also about what your specific goals and needs are. It's never gonna be one thing, that transforms your skin to glassy and clear. It's always gonna be a couple of things and a combination of making really good life choices consistently. It's about being consistent and it's just incredible to have witnessed over the years the benefits of dermal rolling and also deeper laser resurfacing. 
in my more mature clients who are 60 to 95. You know, you can have great skin at any age. You're never too far gone or anything like that. You're always worth it. it. The skin is our largest organ, and I think it's a great thing to look after it and to really take that time for beautification, for self-care. Putting your oxygen mask on first is really important, and I would say it's actually quite an admirable trait because you're going to be a caregiver for others when you first care for yourself too. And all of these tips apply to the ladies and the gents. And in fact, guys love dermal rolling because it doesn't require going into the clinic for rejuvenation. Guys can be a little bit more guarded in regards to going to a clinic for consultation. That's why they love my one-on-one -on -one sessions. And that's also why the dermal rolling at home a couple nights a week is great for guys too, because they don't have to walk around with a red face for a couple of days. Because the, the gentlemen, they don't really want people to know that they're getting things done and, and all of that. Uh, it's also great as a couple and a partnership to do, do your dermal rolling together. Uh, couples that do your skincare, your biohacking, all of that, um, you know, I would beg to question, get the best results because they're kind of keeping themselves both in check and as a team. If you're a team with your skincare and healthy living, you're probably going to be a great team in other aspects of your life as well. And there's nothing wrong with desiring to be, you know, your most beautiful, well-presented version of yourself in both your personal and professional lives. And oftentimes when you first start to connect with me, you learn about all this skin stuff, there's sometimes a driver for that. So whether that's getting a new job or, you know, the kids have left the house or you've just had kids or you retired or you have a big event coming up or there's a wedding coming up, the, yada, 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 the list goes on. There's usually some type of trigger that you kind of think to yourself, like, oh, I really want to do something, but I don't know what to do, but I got this event coming up. I really want to look my best. I know there's going to be pictures and photos, or now I finally have the time to do it. So if that's you, I'm really proud of you. And I'm glad that you're here because here on the show, I'm going to be giving you these sort of like hits in a good way to keep you positive about your self image and your self care. And also, at the end of the day, it's always been my intention to really help you become your most, your, your, your own pro, really, which is the tutorials, but also to become a more conscious consumer because in the skin and rejuvenation space, there's always a new anti-aging serum with these revolutionary peptides, which aren't revolutionary. They've been used in practitioner grade skincare since, you know, well over a decade. It's not new. It's not innovative. There's always these new things. There's, you know, I, I had a new gadget from a company to trial and I might want to read and use my EMF reader before I go near that thing. Uh, but I'm always researching and trialing different products as well. And from my perspective, you know, does it get the yay or does it get the nay? Because I don't want to recommend things and talk about things that are going to waste your time and your money because uh, then I won't have a great sleep score. <laughs> and all of that. All right, well, that's a wrap for today, talking about my top products for dermal rolling. Roller, stamper, copper peptide, vitamin C. That's it. Yes, there are some more advanced layers that uh, we get into more in the tutorials. So learn more over at theschoolofradiance.com. Check out the show notes for this episode. I have bunch of great free resources as well, but I don't teach actually how to do your dermal rolling for free publicly, actually for liability concerns, because I don't want you know, random weirdos buying a roller and using the wrong products and then having seen me do it. And this is a, a professional decision that I made as well as a number of my colleagues a long time ago to not show the DIY stuff online because there a number of years ago, it was just a slew of issues. So say, for example, and there was a YouTuber called Natural Chaos. You know, her and one of my colleagues, Julie Kaplan, they, they you know, butted heads on this talk show, this, this show once. And it's just so important that you make sure that you're, you know, getting uh, proper guidance and doing things appropriately. But yes, there's some things we can do at home and in the clinic. 
I'm thrilled that you are here and, you know, not just listening to what random influencers are telling you to do. That uh, could be just a big waste of your time and also your money and maybe even expose you to things that actually aren't very good for you that you just should be flat out not doing anyways at home. Um, so there's some nuances with what we can do at home, what we should do in the clinic. And, but dermal rolling is great. It's been used for decades at home. All right. Love you all so much. I'll see you again right here on the School of Radiance podcast.